if we have to have water in Galway that we can drink, looking at the coral as a source, we have to be able to filter the water. And to filter the water, the technical level is we have to have a filtration system of less than one micron. On top of that, we need to have a secondary emergency filtration in case the first filtration doesn't work. So from my research, we need to have a very modern and up-to-date water filtration system in Galway, and there's been various suggestions of a secondary filtration using UV lighting, and some people say a system called ozonization. It is a human right to have clean, fresh, and free water. Who is the guy who banged the heads together? And how many, where did the hang heads come up? Just, there's a number of different areas. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a, a problem with the way the whole thing is set up. We have the city council is responsible for the waterworks in Cherryland. That's absolutely the question, absolutely the truth. The people who are responsible for it are the executive of the council, the officials of the council. Who spoke at many meetings, public meetings, over the course of the last five years. And they've attributed uh, the, the, the deterioration of water quality to three things. Farming, domestic, and, uh, and, and um, what is it, farming, uh, and forestation. And uh, we've been reporting this you know, assiduously for the last five, at least five years, pointed by the, the Coral Mass Federation Group, and no attention has been paid to this over the last, at least five years. I'm one of 15 councillors. We became aware of this after Sir Patrick's day. We were told, like he were, through the media. <coughs> we got an email. Immediately, five councillors got together and we organised a meeting. That meeting wasn't called because the officials of Galway told the mayor it would be an illegal meeting. We were being poisoned, but we couldn't have an illegal meeting. Can the people this day and age that this has happened, I think it's just all together for elderly people, people with young children, you know, in hospitals, questions. I think this was an absolute nightmare, the whole thing. And I think this has been a problem that, that you know, has been about to happen for years. I think the warning signs were ignored for years. And I think this could happen anywhere in Ireland. I think the rampant development, the housing that the housing estates would be built without adequate um, facilities for cleaning the waste. Um, you know, I've, 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 into the infrastructure, things like that that have happened. I think the fact that farmers, you know, went against the nitrate directive, you know, and that's been going on for 15 years, it's just a disgrace that they're allowed to spread more waste, more sewerage and slurry and that kind of thing on the fields in Ireland than anywhere else in Europe because the farmers stood up against it. I think that's a disgrace as well, that the Minister of the Environment basically let the farmers get away with that because they lobbied to and lobbied to until he gave in. Um, I just, you know, I think it's just shocking that this has happened. And I think, you know, I would love to see it like a public protest in March up and down Shop Street on Saturday in the middle of the afternoon I certainly would be there and get as many people as I could to attend as well. Thank you. This city has grown exponentially, it's grown, and my company is suffering from urban sprawl. A lot of houses outside the city limits are on septic tanks, and it's already been explained that there are many different causes, but septic tanks are certainly one of the constituent reasons why our water supplies are being uh, polluted. Raw sewage is pumped into this beautiful landscape. The nature of the river Corrib makes it draw towards Galway City, exactly where the water is to be treated. And it kind of looks as if, like the miners end up trying to privatise the tap water for big companies so we pay into the our water. Did anybody verify that for me? If water is privatised, and there's a huge money invested purely in the treatment without looking at its source. And the company who was privatized, the amount of money they invest into that company makes them become a very, very powerful company. And they're allowed, therefore, claim that their capital investment has to be passed on to us as citizens. So it is a very, very important question. I'm in Ace Bogalway. And I remember when I was a boy, I'd gone up to uh, soccer matches in Ireland with my father. And we'd see this at the waterworks in Thailand. And even that time it seemed small. And since that time the city has quadrupled well, that. But no attempt, as far as I know, has ever been made to modernize it. I think it's also a case of sort of profit before people. <clears throat> because all these developments take place. And instead of ensuring that there are proper amenities and a proper filtration system first. 
what to do with the the houses, and then see what happens. Four of the 40 samples tested, mm -hmm. three quarters are coming from human excrement. We do not want to tell us that. I had to elicit that information today. It's not been given to us by the council. Human excrement, not slurry, not animal slurry. Nobody is going to do anything about this unless the people of Galway do something about it themselves. We're the ones who, who have to go to the shops, but you've got a car or you're traveling by bus or however, and you have to lug the water home with you. The, the key thing is Loch Corrib is a dirty lake. The, I just today got a copy of the um, water services investment plan from 2004 to 2006. The full effort of the city council was into the Nocknacarra uh, main drainage scheme, which is basically um, to facilitate development in the Nocknacarra area. That's where the focus was. It was on development, development, development. But at the same time, as somebody pointed out, in Clare Galway, there's no sewage treatment works at all. There's temporary sewage treatment works which are due to fix up with a plant which is not yet built. But the problem is, as developers disappear from the housing estates, um, the temporary sewage treatment plants, how do we know that they're safe? We don't. We need to do something. I think we all know that there's a problem. The idea of setting, reinvigorating that group should be done tonight. We should be aiming for, somebody said for Saturday, but maybe Mondays are better when, they, when the council is actually going to be meeting. Water is a basic human right. Must not be let out for sale or commercialization in any way. Clean up the current, straight and fair. Infrastructure before development. Developers have made billions out of development. But the simple fact is that the resources have not gone in to local government so that the local government can manage the resources. Now, what we would like is if anybody can volunteer their time so that we can put the petition into Shop Street and manage and have it signed and commented by the people of Galway. I think something has to result from this meeting. Okay, where energy cannot be wasted just talking. We have to do something. We have to show the city management team that we mean business. We're not going to go away. We didn't put these officials in power, and yet somehow they are having control over one of our basic human rights, and that's the right to water and a clean environment. Um, I propose a protest. We need a lot more here than what we have. We need a lot more power here than what we have. We don't realise how frightening this thing is at all. We're trying to start it.